Hi, I'm Dr. Adrian Bromwich, and I'm going to talk about the mysterious Z-score. I'll tell you what it is and why it matters. Z-scores are a way of exploiting the normal distribution curve and its empirical rules. These are that in any normal distribution, 68% of all data points are within one standard deviation either side of the mean value. 95% of all data are within two standard deviations either side of the mean value. And 99.7% of all data are within three standard deviations either side of the mean value. So what is a z-score? Well, we can convert each data point in any normally distributed data set using a process known as standardization. And this is a kind of mathematical transformation, and the result is a z-score for each data point. How does standardization work? Well, it does two things. Firstly, it converts the mean of any normally distributed data set to zero. It also converts the standard deviation to one. Remember that the standard deviation is a measure of spread of the values around the mean score. It also converts each data point into its distance from the mean, as measured in standard deviations. And this distance is the z-score. So what does this all mean for us? Well, because the z-score tells you how far any data point is from the sample mean, if that sample mean equals zero, then your data point is equal to the sample mean. If it is positive, then your data point is above the sample mean. If it is negative, then your data point is below the sample mean. If it equals plus one, then your data point is exactly one standard deviation above the mean. If it equals minus one, your data point is exactly one standard deviation below the mean, and so on. So knowing the z-score of each data point also allows you to calculate the probability of discovering it in a random sample from the population that it was originally sampled from. And this is because the area under the normal curve represents the probability of finding each data point in the distribution. So if we know where the data point is located in the distribution, we can calculate the probability of finding it. So what else can we do with our z-scores? Well, z-scores can help us to directly compare any normally distributed variables, regardless of the nature of the variables, and regardless of the original unit of measurement. So if we convert different raw data sets to z-scores, we can compare them in terms of their location in relation to the mean score, which of course is going to be zero. Uh, for example, I could use z-scores to objectively settle an argument such as who was the greatest of all motorsport champions. So I could compare the best racing car driver to the best motorcycle rider by using z-scores to compare their own racing results against the average results by all racers in their particular motorsport, car or motorcycle racing. And then I'd be able to see whether the car racer or the motorbike racer uh, had the lowest probability of being found in those distributions. And with these sample distributions in front of you, you can see that the motorcycle racer is towards the uh, positive tail of the top normal distribution, which means it has a lower probability of being found. It's a rarer score. So they're the champion of all motorsports.